It is my pleasure this morning to introduce a very distinguished panel who will be talking to you about their choices, their institution, and the, the path that they have been on in making investments and implementing Kuali. So I'll let each of them uh, introduce themselves in turn. We'll start with Mike, and then I'm gonna sit down and join them for a little unscripted Q&A. Thanks, Brad. Uh, my name is Mike Allred. I serve as the Associate Vice Chancellor for Finance and Campus Controller at UC Davis. Good morning, Lynn Johnson, Chief Financial Officer at Colorado State University. I'm Deborah Jacobs. I'm the Vice Provost for Library Affairs at Duke University and co-chair of the Kuali Ole Board. Hi, I'm Mike Burke from Boston College where I'm the Vice President for IT and the Chief Information Officer. So let's get right to it. Each of you is a senior administrator. You hold a very important role at your institution in helping to move it forward. So I'd like to know what was your personal calculus? As an executive, you're often thinking about where am I going to put my passion behind and drive through and champion something and how will that reflect on me? So I'd like to talk just a moment. What was your personal calculus in deciding to take your institution and champion this direction? And I wanna start with Mike because he came in very early before Kuali Financial had even put out a release, as I recall, or it may have been a dot, dot, dot something release. Right. In fact, Brad, we were involved uh, in 2001, 2002 in the Big Ten Consortium discussions about uh, moving forward, and we decided that uh, we needed to do it on our own, and we went about that, and before long, a series of budget crisis has hit the state of California, and we needed a partner to share the cost of a new financial system, frankly, and so that was the calculation for us. How do we minimize the cost to replace a system that had only been in place eight or nine years? Yeah, and, and as, as I recall, um, Kuali Financial had launched with six investors, uh, some investment from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. Uh, we were not really looking to onboard more at the time. We had enough to figure out on our own. And Mike, at the University of California Davis campus, championed campus and University of California system office right. investment, came in with a million dollar investment. So I want you to talk a little bit about the role you played, the risk you may have perceived, and how that went down. Well, the risk for us was, we, on the one hand, we had a financial system that was written in Uniface that we couldn't support and we couldn't modify and was not working for a campus. Uh, and Kuali, uh, what was going to be Kuali, was very similar in terms of GL and chart of accounts to what we had now, very similar to what Indiana University had. So that seemed to minimize some of the risk. Um, the University of California had underinvested in technology for many, many years and was searching for a replacement financial system. So in talking to this with the leadership at OP, uh, their thinking was, gee, a quarter million dollars in cash on our part, you guys contribute the FTE, the other three campuses. Um, that's, that's an easy decision to make, count us in. So that worked out really well. We've had a change in leadership that is at, at UC now that is pursuing some other options, but I think uh, we're still on the right track. Davis is up and running in KFS. UC Irvine is, is coming up in a few months, so uh, things are looking good. So now you look like the smart guy. I don't know about that. We, <laughs> but, uh, we did it at a very low cost compared to what vended solutions are costing universities of our size. Okay, now Lynn, I know you look like the smart woman at Colorado State University now since you guys were the first big institution to go live. As the CFO there, can you talk a little bit about some of the forces of which way you were going to go and how you thought about spending your personal political capital on this unproven idea? So. Um, I may be revealing some secrets that Brad doesn't know about me, but when we were looking at Kuali the first time through, I was actually the director of sponsored programs at Colorado State University. And our look at Kuali was actually being driven by our controller at the time, and he had sent out an individual out to Kuali Days to go out, understand what's going on, and come back with some reasons as to why we should not go down the Kuali path. <laughs> and that individual, many of you here may know who that is, and that was Troy Fluharty. And yes. Troy came back yes. to the controller at the time and said, I can't do it. I can't tell you a reason <laughs> as to why we should not be going down the direction of looking at Kuali very seriously. 
And um, so we had just gone through an RFI with SAP and Banner and PeopleSoft and found that we had a lot of gaps. And when Troy came back and said, we ought to be looking at Kuali, that was the starting point. And at that point in time, the research area was looking at a replacement for a homegrown system. And I personally got engaged at going to Kuali Days. And I remember coming back thinking I should be walking in a parade with a banner that said Kuali, Kuali, because I heard <laughs> Brad speak the first time. And I knew that he was the Pied Piper. And that was the direction we should go. Um, being in the research side, I sat and watched our faculty members collaborate across this country in pulling great research projects together that benefited mankind. I didn't see, a, I, when I saw that and I saw what the Kuali community brought to the table, it was about time that the administrative side of the university began following suit with our faculty members and collaborating and making the realm in which we operate and provide services to our campus the best that we can. So from my perspective, it felt like home. Yeah, there is a difference between our, our first two speakers and our next two because they have implemented, they were investors in Kuali Financial and, and so they're, they've gone live and they look real smart right now. And our other two presenters up here, their projects are still in the oven and still, uh, yeah, move. So uh, they're just in a time uh, way. This is a different part of the life cycle of a project. So I'm going to jump over to Mike because student was one of the next projects. And proportionately, uh, if we think of the financial system, you know, as this big and you know maybe the library system is something about like that you know the student system is this big it's it's really really a big complicated enchilada so mike why don't you talk about some of your thoughts of making the argument and choices to lead there uh, at your institution sure so I, I'd like to go back to the first word you used, personal calculus. Personal so, calculus. So for me, it was like calculus. And I'm an engineering major, and I spent a lot of bad hours doing calculus. But we, at Boston College, we, we are, let's say, a very conservative organization. And my job as but, a but CIO. He, he does have a data center with stained glass windows, and it is beautiful, may I add. <laughs> OK, keep going. And we, we're very conservative by nature. And as a CIO, my job is to you know, maintain reliable, stable systems that the university can run on and prosper, but at the same time, try to push for innovation. And you know, Kuali seemed like a potentially innovative idea. But however, uh, I think you're aware, I came out of the software industry. So I've had a lot of experience with big packaged applications, SAP, Oracle's eBusiness Suite, and even at Boston College, uh, Oracle's PeopleSoft product. So the university had started looking at things and in 2008, 2009 timeframe was very serious about putting in a vendor package. But then a little fiscal reality hit in that fall with the downturn of the stock market and the endowment. <laughs> So we had to really take a serious look at things from a different perspective. We had a, so we looked at the opportunities with the vendors. We looked at the opportunities of doing it our own with Kuali. Every other opportunity was out there from every angle, from the fiscal uh, issues, from the technology issues, from the long range viability, the licensing, the intellectual capital. And thankfully we had a great team on board at Boston College that was able to take us through that and really build the case to the trustees that we have a better prospect for a system that is going to serve our university well with Kuali, a system that is in the process of being built with all the inherent risk, but all the upside potential versus the alternatives that weren't even designed this century, that were designed in the last century. So the, full, the upside potential was there, and we saw the risk of Kuali diminishing over time. Yeah, I might comment on students. So of the eight quality projects, some of them began in very similar ways. So the financial system started with the baseline design that had been proven to work at Indiana University for our small campuses and our large campuses. We've got eight campuses, Nakubo had looked at it, and it needed to be brought forward to a new technology and some improvements. Likewise, research administration began with the COIUS, the MIT COIUS system and then it was brought forward. Student system started with saying, we don't really want to create your father's Oldsmobile and bring it forward. We want to think about a student services system that really is next generation thinking. 
So it started from a blank piece of paper in designing, not the automation of the registrar and the automation of the bursar, but what would a student services system need to be? It was a bigger and harder project, so I appreciate you calling out the upside of achieving it as well as the risks mm -hmm. of a large software project. Now, Deborah, the library project had a long history a little bit before it landed in Kuali, and then you became the chair of the board and, and leader of it. So talk a little bit about your role and decision of how that all unfolded for libraries. Sure, I was sitting here trying to remember step by step the history. It feels kind of like a snowball that just carried <laughs> us along because we were contacted at Duke about, I don't know, six years ago, seven years ago by the Mellon Foundation and asked to lead uh, an inquiry, an initiative, uh, to look at what a system built by libraries, uh, designed by librarians uh, for an integrated library system would look like. In other words, what would it take to break out of uh, the commercial uh, world? Um, because we've, for years we've been accepting and working with a decreasing number of vendors' products, yep. which require a lot of workarounds and don't quite mesh with, with our systems. So we were, um, we were offered this opportunity to coordinate with a, a nice grant from Mellon, uh, an international look at what libraries actually need. Um, when that was completed, of course, we were so excited about the potential that we said, well, we want to uh, move this forward, so Andrew Mellon again, our patron saint, we are so grateful for the support of the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation in so many ways. Um, and uh, we put together the year one proposal, we gathered some partners, uh, we have a really diverse group of partners, and then we um, were awarded the funds, we committed funds of our own, and we were looking for a home and a kindred community, and that's how we landed with Kuali. Yeah, as I recall, that was an interesting time period because it had a long incubation cycle. Uh, like most things in libraries. Right? Uh, <laughs> it had a long incubation cycle, <laughs> and uh, the librarians had really done their homework. They had conducted many workshops, that report's available, and uh, trying to understand what do libraries need and where the world is going. And th they had talked to us a little bit in the quality community, but they really were pretty much on a journey saying, we got this one, uh, we're good, you know, and heading on down a path of saying they were gonna you know, build software and kind of their own organization. And as they thought about it a bit more, they thought, you know, uh, while library systems are different than those other big administrative thingies that you're doing over there, you know, you guys have figured out a number of things, like, you know, how you do the money and how you run a software mm -hmm. project and how you run a functional council. And librarians, you know, said, let's have a chat. And one thing led to another, and I believe we were in, uh, where San Antonio, as I recall, was where we announced that the library project had received the Mellon grant to go forward with the software build and get started. So now that such an obvious outcome has happened in libraries, I assume you have hundreds of members on board? Uh, hundreds of members with Koali Olay? Yeah. Uh, not quite, not yet. But, <laughs> not but yet. When, well, but, I was... when, but after Lehigh and Chicago uh, go live, there will be people flocking to us because they're, you know, librarians are a cautious bunch. They, uh, <laughs> they, they, they tend you know, to have a little some caution. Some of us are more pioneering than others, let's just put it that way. Yeah. So even after Deborah and her library colleague investors, including uh, uh, a number, you can see the roster, I won't name them all, and a consortium in Florida as well, decided to do this. They put their money in. They've been meeting. The 1.0 software release is, is out. 1.5 is coming. The first two uh, institutions, University of Chicago, an amazing a uh, library of Judy Nadler there and uh, Lehigh will be going live next July. There's still a bit of caution in that community of just yet to see if you've proven yourself to have taken a good risk. Is that mm -hmm. fair? I think so, yeah. I mean, librarians take the long view and uh, I think there are a number of people who are naysayers in our world. Uh, you know, they would rather just follow the tried and true and you know, oppressive commercial products, <laughs> but that's okay, you know. 
um, if that's what, but I, I think we're, you know, we'll open a lot of eyes when we go live and people already have seen the press release and I've been getting some emails this morning. So, you know, I, I mean, I, I think there was a certain, oh, they could never really do this. It would be a really great thing if they could, but, you know, we're not sure. And I should also add, uh, Deborah is the incoming chair of the Association of Research Libraries for uh, the next year, which is a, a major, very three huge. Years, three program. years, vice president, president, and past president. Past president. So, so she's I got get a, another she, three years. She'll have a, a megaphone sentence. she can speak from uh, <laughs> uh, in doing that. One other thing about the Personal. library project Personal. that I think is particularly important for our keep your money in your mission, I had no idea that a library system needed a financial system inside it. And there's a lot of stuff libraries do that are very, very financially oriented. And so what the librarians said is, we don't want to spend our library dollars building that big chunk of the library system. Why don't we take Kowali financial system and just put that in, or if an institution is a KFS user, you could connect them together. And so they were able to keep their money in their library mission and not spend their development dollars building the financial piece because they could reuse big parts of what was already going on. So open question to anyone on the panel, what's been your institution's reaction to this path? How, has the conversation evolved, someone shocked, somebody really had an insight. Is there some moment you might share about this at your institution? I'll go first, Brad. I think for us at UC Davis, we've been at this for quite a while. We've had some change in leadership, but I think more than anything, it's just been a quiet confidence that there has been no disruption, no calling of the vice chancellor's office or the provost's office complaining about the system not performing or, or other problems. So it's just been very calm, very quiet, very rational and kept moving and it's moved across the research side and uh, Quali Rice and someday maybe Olay, so we'll see. I would add it's been received much more favorably than I could have anticipated. The uh, enthusiasm on campus from the faculty and, and the staff has been really positive about the idea of doing something with Kowali. Kowali, there's a, a feeling of um, a great opportunity to be working with peer institutions and really making a difference. Yeah, I'll chime in on this question one myself. Uh, we're very fortunate, an excellent group of trustees at Indiana University. They pay a lot of attention uh, to these matters and they think the path that we are on uh, of containing a lot of cost and sharing things amongst colleges and universities is just absolutely spot on. Our chair of uh, finance and audit now chair of the trustees, really very favorable towards this. Some of you who were at Kuali Days a, a couple of years back heard from President Michael McRobbie at Indiana University, and he had long been a champion that colleges and universities can share software, just as academics had before, and that we, this was an important tool for us to manage costs, get systems we need, and keep our money in our mission. Could, could any of you speak to anything you've noticed in your staff who have worked on Kowali projects? And this is a big distraction for staff who used to just run the trains at home. Mm -hmm. And if you choose to come in as an investor and help create, I'm not, we'll have many of our institutions out there that you just want to download the software or you want to work with one of the commercial affiliates who may be running it in the cloud for you. And so you're principally a consumer and paying attention to meetings like this. But everyone up here has been an investor in this software and it has required some time and energy of your staff. Could you talk about that a little bit and, and maybe something you've observed or trade-offs of that? Um, I'll take a stab at that, Brad. I think at Colorado State University, um, Actually, yes, it's added additional work to the staff, particularly when we've got new versions coming out and staff are called upon to do the testing related to the system. But the benefit that that provides to them is they become experts in the software. And they also have opportunities to collaborate with peers across the country. And they become much more versed in the language in which they're talking. And I think it's actually allowed them to grow so much faster in the career path or even taking a different career path that they hadn't even envisioned because the opportunities are so much broader than they were had we been relying upon a vendor to provide that service for us. 
Yeah, I I've seen the same thing. I think our staff are far more productive, far more interested in the work that they do now compared to working on vended systems or, or other projects. And they like you know, the collaboration and working with people across the country. I can say the same thing about, about Kuali Ole. The, um, you know, a huge thank you to the staff at all of our partner institutions and particularly to my staff at Duke who have stepped up and really taken on a lot. But I, you know, I, I hope I'm not putting words in their mouths when I say that it's been very enriching to feel that you're part of something much bigger than your own institution. Uh, I'll certainly chime in with my other hat on as the CIO at Indiana University. We were an early investor in Sakai and then I think almost all of the Kuali projects, I'll have to run the roster here, I think mm -hmm. we're, we're pretty much becoming a Kuali uh, institution as well as things with Hadi Trust in the library space and a variety of other things. We have empirical evidence now that shows the engagement in these projects for our staff. This has been professional development. We have a whole range of people who have built their careers in doing this, and over time, they learn the skill of how to manage and work with others where they have no authority. And I think everyone gets it, mm -hmm. that we all have to have that tool to ourselves with managing with our uh, executive peers and trustees and, and uh, uh, other places. So building those skills of working in distributed teams of people who may see and understand things differently, where you may go into a debate thinking that you really have the way to do it. Your institution is really good at this. And in time, you realize your business process is really old school, that somebody else has really thought this through a whole lot better. And learning how to manage people that come and go that are even at other universities, we have observed a whole generation of leaders arise at Indiana University, whether they're working on collaborative science projects in the research group, or teaching and learning software, or Kuali, this working together in community I view it as an essential part of our professional development because it is building great knowledge and strengths uh, in our team. The other thing, and, and maybe Lynn could speak to this, you guys were the first big institution to go early, go live. They went live in production on a version of the Kuali financial system that the foundation had not officially yet released to the public. Now, do you want to talk about the uh, insights of that? <laughs> I guess so. So Brad used a term today that being an accountant CPA that I really quite, quite resonated with, but I've never really quite associated it with this, and it was LIFO. We were last into the project and we were first out, so I, I really appreciate that, Brad. I can, I can take that home with me and, and let it sit there for a while. Um, so we after we had made the decision that we were going to um, go with Kuali, we joined the community in 2007, but we had a board mandate to be up and running on a brand new financial system for fiscal year 10, which sounds like a little bit out there, but when you think about that, that's July 1st, 2009. We're at the end of 2007. We've got 18 months to go live on a financial system. Um, a rather daunting task as you're sitting there trying to figure it out. but. I liken our move in that direction. You know those Verizon commercials where the guy walks up and he's got this whole crew of people behind him as he walks up and talks about how that's the network behind him that's supporting him? That's what Kowali is for, was for us at CSU, is we had this whole horde of higher education institutions that were behind us and moving in this direction. And that provided an awful lot of comfort for us to do that. And we were successful at coming live July 1st of 2009. Um, I happened to run into James. He's what, one of the one, three J's that I like to talk about. The period that we went live, those three weeks right before July 1st of 2009, we had one of the three J's at our campus for a week each. And they were from different institutions, I believe Cornell, Indiana, and Davis. Davis. And they were the ones who came and held our hand and had 
that Verizon network back at their campuses that they called upon to help us move forward and get through those three weeks. We were ready for an avalanche when in fact we didn't need it because although it was a branch of the system, it was a very robust and reliable system. And we moved right on through year end and up and live on Kuali and we are now closing our fourth year of being up on the system. So successful audits. Very successful audits, yes. I think this is an important point. Now, you might pause and say, now, why would anyone of sound mind, like Mike Davis, send a staff member from Davis to CSU to help with CSU's implementation, or somebody from Indiana, or someone from Cornell? Are our budgets just in such great excess mm -hmm. that we just do that? What is the rational reason that we would send someone to help CSU go live when perhaps they could, we could have just said, you know, hey, sis, we've got commercial affiliates. Get your checkbook out. Go, 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 go talk to them. Mike, why'd you do that? I, I think for us is, uh, and Jonathan Keller is the person that went to uh, uh, CSU for that week-long period, but we knew that anything Jonathan did there was going to contribute back overall. So, so any, you were any, practicing on CSU. Exactly. Yeah, we were, <laughs> we were. We were using you, Lance. So I'm sorry. Wow. Uh, now you know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think this is a really important point because the Kuali community is founded on a value of enlightened self-interest. And so for IU or Davis or our good friends at Cornell to send and help Colorado State have a successful go live, it's in our interest for CSU to succeed because we're going to be implementing this stuff down the way. We don't need them to wobble and go badly. That's not good for us. And it enabled us to send people and help punch out bugs and find migration script issues and things and bring that knowledge back to our institutions. Now, as that has become a much more mature product, we don't need to repeat that scenario. Uh, over and over. But I will tell you, just by contrast, uh, this has probably been about four years ago at Indiana University. We were in the countdown to go live with a major, huge upgrade of uh, one of our big ERP modules. And we were about four weeks out, and the servers, the test servers, the test servers were spinning out of control. So they fit up, filled up disk or RAM and just pegged out. And we couldn't figure out what was wrong. So we rang up our tier one platinum support agreement, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it either. Well, eventually, um, you know, we're about two weeks out of this thing, and this is getting really serious, maybe down to about 10 days. Finally, one of our people figured it out. It was in a Java virtual machine, and an integration issue and, and such. And I really contrast all that we pay for that platinum support relative to the community being able to send a note amongst the community out here and say, hey, we've got an issue with this or that. I think the wisdom of crowds, and because that wisdom is sourced in our staff who have developed and learned and implemented this, uh, this stuff, this is really us, again, keeping our money in our mission in ways that achieve the outcome that we need, and that is a system that works that can be supported. I, any other experience, Mike? I'd like to add, I think when we were looking at Kuali, one of the things we were struck with was that story about how people went to Colorado State to help out. And we have actually seen that in our in implementation of Kuali student, the early module curriculum management. There has been a red team that has come and visited us and a group of people that have just stepped up to make sure that's successful. And it's really this sense of community, this sense of collaboration that has brought big value yeah, and, and I can name two efforts in the last year where members of the community in different projects uh, were spinning up, they encountered some uh, uh, obstacle, which is not uncommon to implementations of big software systems. And in pretty short order, teams were put together to go visit, to sort that out. The changes and patches were committed back to the software and it raised all boats. I mean, it really was this enlightened self-interest. So we've got just a moment left and I'm gonna go down the line one at a time and maybe this time I'll start on this end with, with Mike. If you were to encounter someone in the hallway and they just said, all right, give me the 30 seconds, what's your pitch that I should go back and talk to my leadership team 
of why we should do this. 30 seconds, tell me. Can't answer anything in 30 seconds. <laughs> seconds. Um, I think it's, it's the future. It's the way that things are going. Early on, we heard from one of our trustees when we brought it forward to the board was nobody's buying package software anymore. That's a way of the past. And if you look at how uh, software licensing is going to the cloud to a pay by the month, pay by the service, pay by the use, if you invest in these big capital assets and then you have to transition to get the upgrade, it's a different business model and you lose some control. I think with this community, we can do great things and we can retain control and control not just over the technology and the functionality, but also over the cost. Yeah, and to unpack that just a little bit, um, the quality software, you own it. So you can run it locally, you can work with a commercial affiliate and run it in the cloud. You could take a group of institutions and put together yourself, your own cloud to run it. And I think it's important not to <coughs> contrast where the software runs on premises or off premises with the rights and control that you have, whether you are running somebody else's software that they can take away or turn off or you have the ability, should you not be in the situation you like, to move to a different provider, to take it and run it yourself. You have that option, no matter what premises the software runs on. So 30 seconds, Deborah, what's your pitch? Uh, I would say freedom, flexibility, collaboration. Libraries are very good at collaboration. They've uh, got a long history of consortial collection building, all sorts of other projects in which we share. Um, and uh, for us, uh, and for a potential uh, Olay member, I would say the flexibility, which we have not had with our commercial vendors, uh, to develop something that, that meets our needs, especially in a changing world in which we have a lot more dependence on electronic resources, and just the freedom to be a community of our own and to uh, pursue what we need. Lynn. Yeah. And in Institutions of all sizes. What if you were speaking to somebody maybe from a bit smaller institution than a Colorado State? I, I think from a small institution perspective, the thing that I take away, regardless if I'm speaking to them or I'm speaking about Colorado State University, should resonate more with them than it does with us, and it's the word leverage. I learned new math while I was here today. I can put two in and I can get seven back. There's not any other place I can put two in and I can get seven back. And what that means is I can put two resources in and because there are partner schools that are in there, they're putting two in as well and I'm gonna end up getting the work of seven people back. And when you're a small institution, you're gonna be leveraging those who are larger than you, the Indiana, the Cornell, the Michigan State, the Hawaii, all of the partner schools that are involved in this, you're leveraging against them and you're getting their know-how and their resources that are coming back to you in the equation of two to seven. And you can't lose with that. Mike. Yeah, I think what I would say is it's about the collaboration, the community, but also the total cost of ownership. And, for, and we have a session coming up on Thursday with Michigan State and Cornell where we will share what we have spent over the years on KFS and and how that has looked, but it also has allowed us to uh, implement in a very modular approach. So we've been at this for several years, several phases, and it has not been disruptive, and it's worked really well, and that goes to the modularity of the, of the system and how easy it is to work with and how people can understand it and make it work for them. So, so I'll end with two conclusions. Uh, perhaps the greatest indicator of leadership success is that they are all still gamefully employed at the same institution. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that's the empirical uh, outcome. And the second one is, I'm on a number of different boards. Many of you are, different associations and things such as that. And I want to tell you, no organization has better, no 501 organization has better financial advice than the Kowali Foundation with all of our financial people here who are involved, and Mike is the treasurer uh, of the foundation. Thank you, let's give a big hand to our panel. Thank you. Thank you.